We're on video number two for section 9.3 and now we're talking about spheres and I'm showing you all the formulas here. Um, once again, they will be on your formula sheet. It, it's fine when you're finding surface area to, to use the radius or diameter. You just have to make sure you use the right formula and same thing for the volume. Okay, and this explains what it, what it is to, for it to um, be a sphere. You know, it just looks like a ball. It has a radius, it has a diameter. The radius is from the center of the sphere to the, a point on the outside. And then, of course, the diameter would be all the way across um, going through the center. Okay, so on this one, it says to find the surface area and the volume, A and C. I think I probably meant that to be A and B, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to change that. I want to say this is going to be a B. So we're going to find surface area and volume. For surface area, since they gave us radius, right, and the radius is going to be somewhere in here, right, to a point on the outside, we're going to just use these formulas. So my area is 4 pi r squared surface area right surface area it's like how much how much would it take to cover the sphere all right so we're going to substitute in, in our numbers four pi oh well it's really just one number times 18 squared and then calculate that so 4071.5 um, this says to round to the nearest hundred. So if we do that, that's not what I meant to do. Here's it. That is what I meant to do. Oh, geez. I want the arrow there. <laughs> and so we're going to round this to, and remember this is our surface area. We're going to round this to 4,100 uh, square feet. Okay, and then part B, I need to make a, I need to fix my um, slides here. I'm going to, I'm going to do that before I use it again. So volume is 4 pi r squared divided by 3 for the formula that uses radius. <laughs> we substitute in. 18 and then calculate car carefully when you calculate this you should get 24,429.0 so we're going to round that to 2400 400 cubic feet because we are rounding because we are rounding to the hundreds place all right, so the one nice thing about a sphere is you basically have the one measurement, and that's what you go with. And that makes it kind of handy. Here's our next example. So as you can see, this one is a combination problem. And our combination here is of um, a hemisphere. So a hemisphere is half a sphere and then a cylinder. And so we have some different things we have to do. The metal silo shown in the figure has a hemispherical top. It is to be painted with exterior weatherproofing paint. If a gallon of this paint covers 280 square feet, how much paint is needed for two coats? Don't forget about that part. Do not include the bottom of the silo. Round your answer to the nearest gallon. Okay, so here's what we need. We need the lateral surface area of a cylinder plus um, the lateral surface area of a hemisphere. Now you may say, how do you do lateral? We can kind of look at it that way when it's a hemisphere because we're not going to find the whole sphere. We're not going to find um, like the top of it. So you can consider it like the lateral area. Um, basically though, it's going to be the surface area of the sphere divided by two. Okay, so maybe I'll put that here. I do surface area divided by two. 
just so that you understand what I'm talking about with the hemisphere. Okay, so now we're going to write out our formulas here. So circumference times the height for the cylinder because it's just the lateral area of the cylinder. And then we're going to add 4 pi r squared divided by 2. Now, I guess I could have used the um, diameter there, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. If my um, diameter is 18, then my radius is 9 feet. And I'll use 9 in my uh, calculation on that part. Okay, now there's something else we have to figure out. What is um, the height of the cylinder? Well, as you can see, we've got this 38 that goes all the way from bottom to top. And so we have to do a little calculation here. Basically, our radius is 9 feet. And so this distance from here to the center is going to be 9 feet. And you got to kind of picture this in your head. Okay, so picture this coming from the center of the hemisphere down to the center, and that's 9 feet. That means we subtract 9 feet from the 38, and that gives us a height here of 29 feet. So our cylinder has a height of 29. And then, of course, you, we've got the radius. So that's one of the reasons, too, for me using the radius on this. So then we're going to have pi times the diameter times the height of the cylinder plus 4 times pi times the radius squared. Oh, you know what? I can actually simplify this. So that's going to be 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 pi r squared. So here I can just use 2 pi r squared. That's our calculation to get our um, lateral surface area. Okay, so this is 522 pi plus... 162 pi. So that's just multiplying the numbers that, that are there with the pi. Like on this one, that would be 2 times um, 81. And then this is 18 times 29 is the 522. And this helps you with rounding. So if I add these two together, kind of like like terms, I get 684 pi. And I'm going to multiply that by 2 because I need two coats. Okay, so my lateral surface area is going to be about 4,297.699 square feet. And then I have to do a conversion with that, right? So 4,297.699, that's square feet. I'm converting it to the number of gallons, and it takes 280 square feet for one gallon. All right, that's going to eliminate the feet squared. I'm dividing the 4297699 by 280 and that gives me about 15.3 gallons. So if I'm rounding that, it says round to the nearest gallon, I would round that to 15 gallons. But you could make an argument that, oh, we should get 16 gallons because we might not have enough paint if we if we round it off to 15. So just pay attention on my lab how it tells you to round. On this the nearest gallon would be 15 but logically we might say 16 is better. And you know we kind of have to think about that because these are real life type questions. Okay here's our next one. So this one says what is the weight 
of the bushing shown in the figure if it is made of steel weighing 0.2833 pounds per cubic inch. The inner cylinder is hollow. So what we have to do is, I'm going to write this out so that you, so that you know, subtract the volume of the inner cylinder from the volume of the outer cylinder, inner cylinder from the volume <coughs> sorry of the outer cylinder. So we're finding volume on both, but we will subtract the one from the other one because the center has to be removed because it's open. Okay, all right, so the volume is going to be pi times the radius squared. Um, so for the larger, of the larger cylinder, so my radius would be three inches, pi times the radius squared, times the height of the cylinder, right? This is the height of the cylinder. So we're going to be, we're going to multiply times 7.5. That's the big cylinder. And then we're going to subtract out the small one. If my diameter is two and a half, then my radius would be 1.25 inches. So I'm going to take pi times 1.25 inches squared. And then once again, times that same height because the inner part is the same height as the outer part, but we've got to get that subtracted out. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing uh, with my number 67.5 pi minus 11.71875 pi. So that's just multiplying the numbers without putting pi on my calculator yet. And now I'm going to calculate the whole thing. So my volume is, it's rounded some, 0.241965 cubic inches. That looks like the whole thing that was on my calculator. But anyway, we're going to convert that then to pounds, right? This is our conversion factor for that because a cubic inch weighs 0.2833 pounds. So we're going to take that 0.2833 pounds in one cubic inch. This cancels out the inches and converts it to pounds. It is multiplication. So multiply those two numbers and we end up with 49 0.6 pounds for this little small um, thing here. That's pretty heavy, right? It's not very big, but it's real heavy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pause again or stop the video again, and then we're, we'll pick up with the next video on more of this lesson.